Ladies and gentlemen, today's broadcast is going to be something you don't want to miss because there's something weird going on. Are you seeing it? During this whole period of the Halloween thing out there, don't, the, the winter solstice, the witches are doing their thing. But then it's weird because you're seeing demonized groups of people hitting the streets, crossing London Bridge, thousands of them manifesting all over the world. And it's over, weirdly, a crime done to a Jewish community has everybody mad at the Jews. It's, it's, you ne you're never going to see history the same once we explain to you the spiritual dimensions of what's going on. This thing happened, by the way, kicked in while I was in Europe. My son got married in Prague, and uh, Annabelle and I and the family flew over. And while we're over there, you know, all this stuff is happening. But I noticed something. I noticed that while we were in the environment of each other, we were focusing in on, on the marriage and on, you know, families come together, they meet each other. It created a kind of a buffer around the news. I could go back to the news and I did emergency news, you know, at night for people. But there was kind of something about the healthiness of community. I want you to think this is a season to focus on your emotional, mental, and spiritual health because the, the virus of stress is only going to increase. The Bible says in the last days, the stress is going to increase. But something curious happened. Before I left, my staff got a hold of something Feel younger, think sharper, live better. They said, why don't you try this while you're going to Europe? <laughs> cellular, cellular function booster, a liquid NADH CoQ10 collagen. So I'm thinking collagen, right? That's like, that's like what you need for your skin and your health and everything. The CoQ10, I understand that. Then I looked at this NADH, which is for energy and for mental clarity. And I said, all right, I got to try this out. So I got these little bottles and I only had like a seven day supply. But here's the weirdest thing. I took it on the plane before I left. I had no jet lag when I got there. I continued till I ran out of this cellular function booster. And man, the moment I stopped taking it, boom, it was like, like I, I was back to normal again. And I thought, this is, this is bizarre. I want you all to get on. I'm taking it again now, every day, now that the staff's got it back in the, you know, the office here. I want you to take one of these two ounce bottles every day, first thing in the morning, and bam, it's going to do something for you. NADH, CoQ10, boost your energy, mental clarity. Big thing for me is mental clarity. Got to have it. Go to lancewalnout.com forward slash strong cell. lancewalnout.com forward slash strong cell, C-E-L-L. -L. And uh, find out for yourself why it is that this is recommended by Charlie Kirk. I think turned my staff onto it. And then boom, he's a young guy. What does he need? I need it. I'm older than him. And it's powerful. Check it out for yourself. Use my code name there with the strong cell link, and you're going to get a discount. Just try it. You'll see why I love it. I right, remember that's lancewalnut.com forward slash strong cell. Now let's get into today's wild program. Welcome to the Lance Walnut Show. Today, we're going to be also recording for our Real America's Voice. Our show comes uh, some point before Steve Bannon on Saturday. So welcome to all of you that are going to be watching from Real America's Voice as well. Now, Mercedes Sparks is in the uh, studio today. Mm -hmm. We're going to go over to Mercedes. How are you? Hello. I see you're surrounded with fall foliage. And That's, uh, I, my latest, I, the, you have toys on your desk, so I was going to start adding stuff to my desk. Yeah, I appreciate that. And we have, mm -hmm. we have the, uh, probably the politically incorrect version of the Thanksgiving thing. Come on, guys, get the camera. Pan, uh, pan. Pan, pan to the camera over oh. here. There you go. So we have this original Native that American flattering couple. side angle of you. Hmm. No. All right, all right. Now, there's so much news going on this week. This is the Week in Review is what I'm doing right now. For those of you that have wondered about, uh, you know, I, I haven't done the, la the latest Lance rants, the, the late night uh, conversation, so I'm going to give it to you today. First of all, the big story, obviously, is the situation with Israel and uh, Hamas, but that's almost becoming secondary to the, to, the, to the fomenting of rage and the bizarre alignment of Arab and radical leftist sympathy with Hamas. And what is amazing to me, I mean, positively amazing that no one's talking about, is in all of the outrage about Israel dealing with the terrorists that have attacked their innocent people. Nobody's saying, why is Hamas holding on to over 100 kidnapped victims? Why don't they release them? Why? They've stolen 
people, including Americans, and nobody's even talking about how many Americans are in there. I think it's one of those things where if we go into the White House press briefing, it's amazing to me that Karine Jean-Pierre has not been asked, do we know if any Americans are being held hostage? Because that is a question someone should ask. We've probably got 20 Americans, 120 Jewish people, and there, we should be, there should be radical protest over release the hostages instead. It's Israel is at fault. It's the most bizarre thing, but it, it's instructive. What does Elon Musk say about this moment? Elon is nailing it exactly. Bring up the Elon quote. He is saying the great wakening from woke has happened. This is good for civilization. Mercedes, hmm. what do you think he means by the great wakening from woke? I think people are aware that woke is not what they've been led to believe, that it's actually a radicalized ideology um, that people have been indoctrinated into believing is some sort of altruistic endeavor. But uh, that's what I think it means. People are waking up to that. It's really um, hate, a lot of it, intolerance. And, and, I, and I think that what's happening is there's, an, there's a awakening, a great awakening or a rude awakening that's happening in the American psyche regarding the extent to which the campuses have been radicalized and that young people are at a total disconnect. Now, this goes to the data. If you read Axios, has some uh, in interesting uh, data on this. It shows that like 80% of people north of 40 years of age or 35 years of age are really shocked in America over what has happened to the 200 uh, youth that were having a music festival that were suddenly gunned down, raped, and killed uh, during the last day of the Feast of Israel. The, uh, the wanton destruction and maiming and burning alive, beheading that took place, just like a, a bloodlust of barbaric proportions just came over the border upon the innocent, unassuming. The over 35 crowd in America has like an 80% sense of alignment with Israel, almost like they're identifying with it as a 9-11 type of shock event. But what's, un, what's disconcerting is when you go under 30, you have a 50% sympathy with Hamas, 48% to be technical about it. So what's happening is the lower the age level, the higher the degree of the indoctrination takes over, the less history there is of what of what really has happened in the past with anti-Semitism, with Nazism, and it's also the left. The left has done a mischievous job, and you'll see it in this goofy, uh, scripted, Karine Jean-Pierre reference to um, Charlottesville as being a Nazi gathering. It wasn't a Nazi gathering. It was the, it was the, it was the, uh, it was the organizing of conservative, right-wing, uh, working class against the Antifa, BLM, weaponized, and well-funded machinery of the Democrat left as they're kicking off their summer of 200 cities in flames and riots and burning, none of which was a Charlottesville sampling. It was all the left putting itself on display, but never judged, never questioned. Just, well, what do you expect? Uh, people are upset. So the, it's, a, it's a demographic challenge. So that means that the Elon Musk's and the older crowd are really looking at this and going, what the heck? That's the awakening. There is a generational shift that's happened. And so young people are more sympathetic to Hamas. And I also think it's because they don't understand what terrorism really is. They, mm -hmm. it's not like they haven't really lived in the shadow of 9-11. They were, they were kiddos when that stuff happened. So, so they don't really have this sense of what it's like to, to have an irrational, murderous, organized assault upon civilization. Mm -hmm. And I think the danger here is that people think that there's a rationale, but well, it's the Palestinians. They were doing this, they were attacking Israel before there was a Gaza Strip. All the Arab nations went to go destroy Israel and they were formed in 48, they went after them in 67, they went after them in 73. It's, they, they didn't have a Palestinian two-state you know, debate back then. They just were kill the Jews. The Nazis weren't trying to create a deal with the, you know, the issue of, of the Palestinians. They just wanted to kill the Jews. It's weird how in history the Jewish people have been the singular 
a despised remnant of all the, all the com communities in which they tried to become part of. And now you've got uh, the latest here. So where do we go on a story like this? There's a couple of places we can go. Israel Prime Minister, what does Netanyahu say? Uh, we, could, we could play a segment from him if we had it queued up. He says he will not yield to terror. He rejects truce, truth with, truce with Hamas. Right, here's a teachable moment. When, when can you enter into negotiation with an institution, an organization, or a government and create a solution to coexistence between two parties? When can you do that? Well, could you, you could say, when there's a possibility of reform, then there's the possibility of resolution. Here's what I mean by that. We could not reform the Ku Klux Klan. We couldn't kind of make it a kinder, gentler KKK. We couldn't work on and figure out a way to, couldn't we peacefully coexist? Well, that was what the Civil War was about. It's the fact that, no, you can't. One side is going to dominate this policy regarding slavery. The other side isn't. And Lincoln astutely said, you're either going to be all slave or all free. You're not going to be a little bit pregnant, as my dad would say. So... The same situation exists with Hamas, as exists with the KKK, as exists with the Nazi party. You cannot reform it. Now, Nixon's whole uh, detente uh, with, with Russia, with, with um, Gorbachev, and the, the initiative with Kissinger, for those who remember your history, with China, even with the monstrosity of Chairman Mao sitting there with his CCP. The effort was still there that well, it's possible that we could kind of create a, uh, a reform through engagement, bring them into the world and invite them into capitalism and, and a different way of seeing uh, civilization so that they're not isolated and against civilization. But that, my friends, can only happen when a system is capable of reform. And that means that ideologically, it has to have some components in it that are flexible. And here's the conundrum. Hamas is a terrorist organization that has achieved political power. Therefore, uh, if you go biblically, I'm going to give you a biblical analysis. Uh, the Bible says that when, when Jesus returns, the hope of Christianity is, not that the world's going to get better and better, by the way, which is why we watch this with kind of curiosity, because we believe the last days is is a period of, of, of dissolution resolved when Christ himself returns, curiously enough, in the Middle East. That's where he's going to put his foot down on Mount Zion. So all of our eyes are kind of going back. And those of us that are biblically literate, evangelical, or Pentecostal, we look at this and go, oh boy, it's Bible time. You talk about one world currency. You talk about one world government. You talk about a world at war. You talk about Israel being the hot button issue that everybody's focused on. That's pure biblical prophecy unraveling itself 3,000 years old in some of the texts we have. So uh, what are you going to do with Hamas? Netanyahu says, quoting the Bible, should I, should I ask you where he, the mm. quote comes from? That is a time for war and a time for peace, mm. a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to love and yet a time to hate. Where does that come from? Ecclesiastes. Very good. And the author of Ecclesiastes? Mm. Solomon the Great. There I knew go. it was on the tip of your tongue. On the tip of my tongue. Solomon, my friends, <gasps> the wisest man that ever lived, according to the Bible, says timing and that not every season is the season you want. So when Jesus returns in the book of Revelation to the Middle East and his foot goes down on, on the Mount, on the Mount, uh, what is it? The, the Mount, Mount Zion. When his foot, when he comes back, the Bible says, thou shalt smite them like a potter's vessel. And this is an interesting um, metaphor or analogy. There's vessels that are made. If a vessel can be reformed in the Bible, God will slap the clay down and reconfigure it and make it a vessel. It may change its size, its scope, its glory, but he, he has to reconfigure it into something he can work with. But there are vessels that in the last days when Jesus returns, they're beyond fixing, they must be judged. 
ADA, Nazi Germany, the KKK, you name it. There's various institute, the mafia. You're not going to go into the, into the organized crime world and make a kinder, gentler cartel. No, nope. you might get somebody saved. That's our Christian hope. Get them out of the system. But the system, if it's corrupt, must be broken. Hamas must be broken. The Israeli prime minister knows that. They don't know it on the college campuses. They don't know it in the United States. They don't know it in the UN. They don't know it in the EU. They don't know it in the streets that are protesting. You can't have a coexistence any longer. We'll be right back. What happens if a natural disaster takes place? We have these weird tornadoes that hit in the Midwest and in Texas, but look at the hurricanes in Florida. People can literally have their uh, houses flooded or they're in a situation where they have no food or access to groceries. Everyone needs at least a four week emergency food kit. And fortunately, My Patriot Supply has created a four week emergency kit. And these products will last for 25 years. The interesting thing is they give you a 2000 calorie per day uh, meal. And that's the key, delicious and 2000 calories a day, because that's what you're gonna need to sustain yourself for four weeks in a crisis. We had the uh, a winter freeze here in Texas of all places. And we had a couple of days where we had no electricity. I'm telling you something, this makes a huge difference. Mushroom rice pilaf, fluffy rice and mushrooms, seasoned with red wine and herb. And then how about starting the day off? Maple Grove oatmeal, old fashioned oats, maple flavoring with a pinch of brown sugar. This is what you wanna do, four week emergency food kit. And that's just for you. Think about your children, guarantee. Somebody around you is gonna need help you're gonna to wanna to at least have the four week emergency kit. Go to lancewalla.com forward slash Patriot. Use that link and you're gonna get a special discount on their special four week emergency kit promotion. Imagine if there was a, a massacre of an ethnic group or a religious group, um, the equivalent of 50,000 Americans and Imagine if what happened after that was that all over the world, there were marches of tens of thousands of people calling for further massacre of those people. I, I can't imagine it, it's unimaginable, and that's what it feels like right now as a Jewish person, that no matter your politics, no matter what you understand or don't understand about politics, no matter, if you know the history of the establishment of the state of Israel, no matter if you know the history of the Jewish experience for thousands of years, including the history before Islam, there has not been an experience in my lifetime that has prepared me for this. I have heard from many people my whole life that anti-Semitism is growing that the Holocaust, while we say we will never forget, many have forgotten. And the swiftness with which the global population has seized upon the massacre of Jewish civilians living inside of a border, the swiftness with which the world has stepped up to redefine terrorism, to redefine statehood, to redefine the right of a people to exist. Nothing has prepared me or any of us for this. So Mercedes, mm -hmm. that's very a very powerful statement. Mm -hmm. Tell me about who that is, because this is evidently somebody who um, a lot of younger folks know. Yeah. So um, I saw this last night on, I think it was like the Instagram or something like that. But so I grew up with this actress and I, I don't want to say her name wrong, but I think it's Mayim Bilek. But she is a devout Jew. I grew up watching her on Blossom. People probably know her from Big Bang Theory. Um, she's an actual scientist in real life, and she has a doctorate, and she plays a scientist in Big Bang Theory. And so, you know, ha historically has been a very outspoken liberal Jew, which she talks about later on in this. It's a 10-minute clip. It's really 
well put. But like we were just talking about in the last segment, I thought it was a perfect fit because you're talking about the wakening, the woke wakening. And I think that's her processing it in real time. I mean, it's, it's shocking to think about exactly what you were saying. It's like, it's the idea of Nazism being redefined culturally to be well. And she goes on to say, you know, like this is a comeuppance for the Jewish people. She's like, the fact that anybody can think that she can't understand. And, and so it's a, it's, they're having to process this idea of this woke liberal Democrat ideology is now essentially in favor of the genocide. I mean, it's, it's very hard to process. So, so anyway, it's a great clip. Uh, you can go probably go find it online. You well, we'll try, we'll try to put it in the show notes for you, but I, I mean, I, I hope we have that segment. I, I heard the clip earlier and I'm mm -hmm. hoping that everything I heard was in this one Yeah. because the part that really impacted me is to say, can you imagine having the equivalent of 51,000 Americans mm -hmm. um, killed, massacred, and abducted? Put it in perspective. Imagine the cartels in, in uh, the Mexican border come over and decide they're going to go hit a city, and they massacre 51,000 children and parents, and parents with their children, a schoolyard, a, a, a music festival. They take 150 back kidnapped as hostage. They rape. They kill, they're, they're, they're tormenting and they're torturing. And imagine that the whole world says more, more, more. And they want, actually want to see more taking place. Now, someone's going to say, that's not the same situation. It is the same situation. Because what Israel's been trying to do is give a segment of the territory of their, of their land that they had already occupied, giving it back in order to have peace and in a sense, you could say you want to practice this two-state solution. Well, here's your two-state experiment. And what does Hamas do, which is like ISIS in charge of a territory with two million people? They take all the money coming in, including from the United States, from the United Nations, from Arab nations, from, from Iran, and they take it, and instead of putting it into hospitals and schools, literally the, the, the pipes, the, the material that's sent to them, they retrofit into rockets, and then they put it all underground because their entire psyche is obsessed with taking every dollar they can and not building a successful and flourishing community in Gaza, but subjugating the people in order to make them like human shields that exist above ground while they go underground and prepare to do what they, well, of course, they're going to do, which is attack and terrorize Israel, whether it's Al-Qaeda, whether it's ISIS, whether it's Boko Haram, whether it's Hezbollah, whether it's Hamas. You don't want to hear this in America, that these are all offshoots of terrorists hating the Jew mentality, and by the way, hating the West equally. Where the, Iran says that's the little Satan, we're the great Satan. And these people are just, this will really, you know, burn you up. Obama, Biden, Democrats working to find a pathway to give these guys the capacity for nuclear uh, weapons, as though you could, in a month or two or three, as they're 90% of the way to centrifuge uh, convergence, where they can create the beginning of their smart bomb, dirty bombs, you know, they're, they're ready to use these against the West, because do you think for a moment, if Hamas had the ability, they wouldn't use every weapon at their disposal against the Jews, because it's pathological. So, when uh, Netanyahu says, I'm going to read to you what he said in his speech, because I think it's worth hearing, he's giving a message to the United States, because the U.S. really has to stand firm on this. He said, the United States did not agree to a ceasefire after Pearl Harbor. They didn't agree to a ceasefire with Al-Qaeda after 9-11. And we're not willing to accept one after October 7th. He reiterated, it's important to distinguish right from wrong, to distinguish the deliberate targeting of innocence from the accidental death that occurs uh, to a people in war. Now, listen, listen, he has to think this thing through and explain it to the West, although I don't think it, it, it registered. He's drawing an analogy between Adolf Hitler's Nazi troops in 1944 and Hamas. The Gestapo headquarters that held the Nazi secret police would be bombed. But British pilots, in doing so, missed and hit a children's hospital. The Allies didn't say Nazism should stop being fought because of that accident, because they knew what was at stake. 
There was no universal outcry and saying, wait a second, there are innocent victims here, we got to stop. Because they understood, as I said earlier, you're not dealing with a government or a people that have disagreements. I, I listened to this guy, McGregor, the, uh, you know, Colonel McGregor, who was, who was very popular in YouTube and frequently has some very intelligent things to say. A great historian, wise guy, smart guy. And, I, and, I, and he actually said the stupidest thing, which tells me how widespread this virus of, um, of, of academia is. He said, look, what do you expect in the Middle East? This thing's been going on for thousands of years. You can go back into biblical times. It's the Philistines against the Joshua. This is, and what he was implying is, they're irrational, they're, they're, they're worked up, they're torqued up. The Jews are just as crazy as the Arabs. So, you, you know, what do you expect? But this is the madness. And, and I'm calling him out on this because that was a stupid comment. The Jews were not on the, their side of the border figuring out how to tunnel into Gaza and kill the Muslims. Matter of fact, do you know what one group was doing tragically? It was like a classic kind of, uh, sorry to say, almost like woke effort in Israel. They were putting together these little, these little hot air candlelight balloons that would go up and send messages of hope and messages of peace and messages of goodwill on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles that would float up into the skies and go over into the Gaza community, demonstrating that this generation of Jews really wishes goodwill. Meanwhile, boom, they came in and slaughtered them. So the, uh, the reality is when Netanyahu makes the comment that to America, hey, this is, uh, this is going to be, this is not going to be easy for you. But understand, we're not backing down because Israel has to do its utmost to minimize civilian casualties. But Hamas is committing war crimes daily. They're holding people hostage. And uh, what, is, what, is, um, what is equally strange is that they're holding them, their own people, as human shields in the process. Well, I got one minute and 45 seconds left. Uh, any thoughts on this, Mercedes, before I, I, I want to talk about the Israel weapon, special weapon that they're using? This is interesting. I got some breaking news on the weapon they're using in the tunnels, but go ahead. No, I just think it should be a bit where you like want to throw it to me and you just keep going. I just think it's hilarious because you, you're doing it so you can find a headline, like a short comment from Mercedes, and then you find what you want to say. And you're like, anyways, I just think it's hilarious. No, but I, I just wanted to say, yeah, I think, I think with this whole idea of what's really happening in Israel, um, it's got so many ditches on the either side of the road. I want to say there's two, but I feel like there's so many. I mean, you hear the wildest stuff from people that, oh, Israel funded it. Israel was in on it. They were waiting just to be baited. The other thing, Lance, that's so confusing. Like I was talking to somebody else at an event we were just at and her donors dropped when she came out in favor of Israel. And they're like, well, that's who, who, the evil. Who's donors? What? Who? I don't want to say, because I don't know if they want me to say, but her donors dropped when she said that she came out in favor of Israel. And How because, did you find this out? Because she told me. She told me. Oh, and, oh, oh. I thought it was something in the news. No, okay. no, no. She told me. We were having a conversation at this event we were at. And she said, all of my big donors dropped because they are under the impression that all, all these, like, all Jews are bad, basically. Like, they're all part of this evil cabal. And you just think, I mean, the, the disinformation on this side... Oh, and that's, the so, other true. that's side. so true. I've got the QAnon guys, you know, because I don't know how. I try to get the, the antivirus out there. I can't seem mm -hmm. to get it all into people. Well, you know, we've got the limitations of time on this show here. And so I'd like to go on into the Israeli deploy. Israel is deploying a special weapon inside the tunnels. But I'm going to cover that tomorrow. And because uh, the show goes fast, because this is really important stuff we're talking about. I'm also going to go to the board and explain how principalities and powers are working overpopulations in the last days. I'm going to show you in the Bible what's taking place on campuses and in Europe and in Islamic dominated nations right now. And we're going to cover that tomorrow. Look forward to seeing you then. Did you enjoy this latest episode? Please remember to share it with your friends because the more knowledge you have, the better equipped you are to navigate the world.